Etepu, assalamu alaikum, namaste, huru nefer. This is Kasak Maa Keparu with another video for you. In this video, I want to talk about why blacks have a lower IQ score. But before I do that, I want you to hit the like button on this video. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. Hit the subscribe button to get notifications on when I go live and when I upload recorded videos. Lastly, please share this video with family and friends so we can get this revolution started. So let's talk about this uh, idea that blacks have a lower IQ. Now, from a certain perspective, yes, this is true. But there are extenuating circumstances, and let me explain. This is actually a very, very big topic, and I'm not going to be able to cover everything within the context of this video. But I want you to understand this. We see... Um, all of the so-called scholars and Harvard trained individuals coming out doing all of these different studies. And no matter what the studies, it seems that blacks always come out last. Um, black males in particular have really um, low reading scores, low math scores, low enrollment in colleges, and it goes on. And black women are following behind. Now, if you were to look at this from the traditional African perspective of how the world should have been, society is responsible. It takes the village to raise a child. Society is responsible for making sure that each and every person receives an adequate education. And the educational system, the schools in low income neighborhoods are horrible. They are atrocious and the teachers are not paid what they're worth. But that is not even the point of this. What I want to talk about is how you create the rules, you create the game, and then you expect others to abide by your rules. Well, let me explain something. The traditional way of learning based on the Greek mode of oratory skills, meaning the teacher stands in front of the class and disseminates information to the students. That mode of thinking is specifically geared toward left brain individuals, meaning people of white persuasion. That's how you think you are predominantly left brain. Black people are predominantly right brained. Black people do not learn that way. This is why you have individuals who have come out now to understand how learning and processing works, meaning that there are different ways of processing information and different ways of learning. And you have Meyer Briggs type indicators, or we understand the modes of thinking which are tactile, auditory, and kinesthetic. The antiquated way of learning would be a teacher stands up there for an hour and a half and talks the students to death, talks them to boredom. That is not learning. That is throwing information out there, regurgitating information. This is what the Western system of learning is about. It is about parroting information, about just going and picking up a book, reading it, and if you can commit it to memory, you awarded a PhD. That is not real learning. Learning is a right brain trait. You see, the very first geniuses, or the first genius in recorded history is Imhotep out of ancient Egypt, Kemet, the multi-genius. He came before Nikolai Tesla, Einstein, Galileo. He came before all of them. So what I'm saying is when you look at the bell curve or you want to look at why so-called African-Americans or black people in Western society are falling behind, then you must look at the system that you've set up. Look at how poverty impacts health. Look at how health impacts how the brain functions. If you are under a certain amount of stress, if you're always under emotionalism that's caused by your living conditions, then emotionalism lowers the IQ. So what I'm saying is you don't stack the deck in your favor. You don't create the rules that every society has to abide by. And that's the problem with Western society. It thinks it's the standard by what all other cultures must be measured by. And that's not so. We have yet to explore the depths of right brain learning. Because 
we understand that learning when it's done properly is retained in the right brain and the right brain is the seat of innovation it's the seat of creativity it is where inspiration comes innovation comes the left brain needs a paradigm from which to operate from it needs a reference it cannot create anything new it is a good logical faculty it is good at naming defining labeling but it's not good at synthesis that is the realm of the right brain and if you are going to hold people up to standards that you create then we can in turn say that you are failing in our standards because you see along with the right brain comes morality that is the domain of the right brain and they have elevated left brain thinking so high that it lacks the ability to stop and think what it's doing if it's right or wrong you see the society values cunning it values the intellect over the moral aptitude to do the right thing it values deceitful behavior it values regurgitation of information it values rote memorization such as the term the evil genius you have these individuals who come who are so smart who are wall street wizards but they only outsmart themselves and they destroy society in the process how many times have we seen where western society has created something and only for it to turn around and become a frankenstein and destroy its creator it is the seat of the right brain to solve problems and not create more problems in its wake So don't tell me that we as African Americans suffer from a lower IQ score because that IQ test only tests certain faculties and it's so convenient of you to forget that there are other faculties synthesis segregative thought process congregative thought process analytical thought process circumspection but we only value segregative thought process and that is what gave rise to sexism and racism being polarized in left brain thinking where it separates labels and defines and it doesn't see the commonality it does not know how to synthesize So we have a whole generation of geniuses who are not given the opportunity to learn in the correct way. You see the system wants you to learn in only one mode, oratory. But wait, there's kinesthetic. Oh, but what if I'm a tactile learner? That means I need to get up and interact and touch. But no, it discounts that the modern western education system it doesn't want to take that into consideration nor is it taking consideration that auditory tactile and visual can be mixed you can be auditory and visual you can be visual and kinesthetic but again the only thing that they value is auditory learning and even though you may have these individuals graduate with a PhD graduate from Harvard and Yale they're still dumb as a doorknob because they don't know 
true learning, true thinking. They have conformed to a system and they are graded upon how well they conform. Not if they can understand the process of learning, understand how to intuit wisdom and knowledge to call forth from within intuition, to intuit knowledge, to still the thinking process so you can be innovative and creative in coming up with solutions. That is not taught in these universities. What they teach is you read, you remember, you recite, and you get your diploma. That is it. Don't think outside the box. Don't be a maverick. Don't be a rebel. And you will do fine. So yes, according to your standards of deceitfulness, of cunning that you attribute to the left brain, the intellect, black people fall short. We fall very short. But what the world will soon learn is that learning is a right brain trait. Learning is what our ancestors did in antiquity to build the pyramids, to build the great civilizations. And no one, no archaeologist, anthropologist, or historian can argue with the fact that those civilizations were of the most moral on the planet. So we need to look at what we value and then ask ourselves, what is really learning? What is really being smart or intelligent? The ability to outcraft you, to be deceitful, to be cunning, or the ability to be creative and innovative and solve problems without creating more in this wake. This is Kasant Maa Keparu, son of Maat Jehudi, my mother the beautiful goddess, Hedaru. Till my next broadcast, I'm in Ra.